if you had two options, staying in hospital or staying at home, and you knew that the level of monitoring was identical, and you knew that the in, amount of input from nurses, other, other healthcare professionals and consultants was the same, where would you rather be? At the beginning of the COVID pandemic, our innovative respiratory consultants conceived of, designed and implemented a virtual hospital for patients suffering with COVID-19. This not only prevented multiple admissions, but also facilitated early discharge of patients who had required hospital care. The program was so successful that over 6,500 patients went through the virtual hospital, and this became a beacon within the NHS. The national NHS team requested and received assistance and guidance from our teams here and have rolled out the similar program to many other hospitals. With the experience that we've gained from this, we decided we should branch out to other fields and are now designing and implementing virtual hospitals for both heart failure and chronic obstructive airways disease. At the heart of this new model of care is our new MDT. We've tried to put around the table either physically or virtually every care professional that should be feeding in to designing a program of care for that patient moving forwards. All the planning about how a patient is treated in the virtual hospital will come through the MDT, our multidisciplinary team meeting. It's a big meeting where all the virtual hospital patients are discussed, the issues that the patient is facing and how we can help them progress through the virtual hospital and then hand over to the community heart failure team with a long-term plan about their care. The onboarding phase into the virtual hospital is probably the most important and the most uh, critical because this is probably the first contact we make about the virtual hospital. So uh, usually the hub nurse goes, uh, him or herself, meet the patient and there is also this first contact with the technology. And the kit that is available now is very unobtrusive um, and after a couple of days the patient even forgets that they're wearing it. But it's extraordinary what information we can get from that. Um, and that's transmitted to us at hospital and gives us a continuous stream of information. The equipment in itself, it can be a bit Im impressive, imposing when we see that first, but it's actually very easy. It's actually things that uh, we, can, we have been working with and patients have been acquainted to, either in the doctor's office, the nurse office, a blood pressure machine, an O2 saturation, a scale, they might already have that at home. It's just that they're, they're funky ones because they're linked to an app and the app is directly linked to the hospital so we can monitor this in real time. The next stage, of course, is that the patient goes home. Our specialist nurses who've got their own office, which we call the, uh, the virtual hospital hub, has a suite of computers um, showing continuous readouts uh, for every patient in the virtual hospital. The virtual hub is our situation room. It's where everything happens. It's very dynamic. So in real time, we receive all the data, blood pressure, heart rate, O2 saturation, respiration rate of all our patients that are in the virtual hospital. And the hub nurse is actually watching this constantly. Just as they would if a patient was on a real ward in a hospital, the nurses would contact the patient four times a day, uh, establish how they're feeling, and get some additional observations from the patient. They will get a daily call from the consultant specialist in exactly the same way as they would if they were in the real hospital. Um, and in doing so, what we're trying to do is replicate a hospital level model when the patient is safe at home, surrounded by their own creature comforts, being able to sleep in their own bed, eat their own food, have the support of their uh, uh, nearest and dearest. Uh, because this is an integrated uh, care model, we're very fortunate to have a team of extremely experienced community-based nurses who also visit the patient. We work very closely with our partners in community, uh, so they're called Central London Community Healthcare Trust, or CLCH. They are very much involved in the virtual hospital, but their help is also tremendously uh, present for the assessment at home, visit at home on the first days after their discharge from hospital, their first day in virtual hospital, where they are assessed and reviewed by specialized care workers, either in respiratory or in heart failure, uh, to make sure that everything is okay. We know the power of a good face-to-face -face and CLCH, our partners, are extremely helpful with, with this.
I found the virtual hospital very helpful. Coming home and resting, I'm relaxing more. It's less stressful. I am impressed with the, uh, that you get phone calls, that uh, they check up on you and everything like that. It's reassuring that I can talk to somebody. It's always reassuring that you can talk to somebody. Was a bit apprehensive at first about the te technology, because I'm not a techno person. But it's, it's as simple as ABC. Anybody of any age can do it. When you're at home, it helps you recuperate uh, more, I think. Like you're in your own environment, you know where everything is, you uh, can sleep better, uh, you know you're being kept an eye on by the hospital anyway, because you've got constant contact with them, because I uh, have a nurse ring me and a doctor ring me every single day. And it makes me feel safe and secure knowing they're on the other end of the phone. We find that the patient, and we hear that the patient feels like they are at the center of their care. They can master their disease. It's not the disease mastering them anymore. And they are participating actively in their care. So this is a major change compared to you know, conventional hospital care, lying in bed, receiving treatment, whereas being at home, making your own lunch, taking your medication and interacting with the hub about the treatment and what you're going to do today and what we're going to do to make your life better. We're really um, proud of what we've done at West Hearts over the last two years. It places West Hearts right at the front of developing new care models. Um, and, you know, we're really proud of that. And, you know, I think it's a good thing for patients and it's a good thing for the trust. We are um, developing this. We are uh, a little bit writing history about how we can transform care. We have the technology there to help us out, which is very exciting, but it's also a way of working together, integrating the GP primary care, the specialized community team, the acute trust, and working together to make the patient experience better and improving care all over.